Tervan Sarnai everyone. In the previous week, we looked at two things, the Dukkha and Dukkha Arya Satya. Uh, so the, the suffering and the truth of the noble suffering. We understood the difference and we understood how we should look at the suffering and uh, how to practically use them. So if you haven't listened to my previous video, um, there'll be a link up on top so you can go to the previous video and you can listen to the previous discussion so you get a clear understanding about the suffering and uh, the truth of the noble suffering. So moving on, let me tell you a story Imagine there was a, a disease that uh, every person in this world was suffering with and there was no doctor who could cure this disease. So everyone was suffering, everyone knew that everyone was suffering but there was no um, cure for it. And then there comes a doctor he finds the solution, he finds the cure for this disease. He didn't just come, he had to work so hard in order to find out, to discover uh, the, the cure for this. Once he discovers, he shares it with other people and then the other people, the first few, for the first lot, they understood uh, the cure and then they t took the medicine and they got well. And from there, every one of them who became well by having, by taking the medicine, they tried to give the, the prescription to others so they can also take the medicine and cure themselves. But eventually what happened was, or what's happening right now is, that most of the people who take this prescription, what they do is they either read the prescription from top to bottom, um, throughout the day maybe, or daily, or they make a statue of the, the doctor himself and pray the doctor. So my question to you is, is this going to cure the disease? Is this going to be the solution? Is this the correct solution? Or drinking the medicine, the cure or the, the solution for this? That's my question. So. What we need to be doing is actually drinking the medicine rather than reading the prescription or praying the doctor or offering flowers to the doctor on a daily basis. So this is what's happening currently with regards to Buddhism as well. People have made statues. I'm not saying it's a wrong thing to do. It's the right thing to do, but is this what is going to take us to the enlightenment is what you need to understand. What we need to do is actually listen to the prescription, understand the prescription and then take the medicine ourselves. So I'm going to teach you, I'm going to discuss with you how to take the medicine and cure the disease. Coming back to the praying, when we start the praying, we say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. We say that three times, sometimes we say that four times. The, 
the fourth one is a long one we say sadhu 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 so what does this mean the first sadhu is represented by kaina sangvaro sadhu the bodily things that we do so i am going to be disciplined by the bodily uh, immoral activities that i do with my body so that's the first sadhu so it's a this promise that you're doing in front of lord buddha promising yourself it's actually promising yourself that you are going to adhere to these disciplines where you will prevent from these bodily activities what are the three there are three um pranagata adatta dan kama mithya chara so the pranagata is killing other living beings adatta dan is stealing kama mithya chara is sexual misconduct so you are promising not to do any of those to yourself so that is the kaya sucharitya so that is the uh, the body the discipline of the body then the second sadhu is for the vachi sucharitya the discipline of the words so with regards to words there are four musavada parusavacha pisunavacha samprapadapa so what is musavada the the lies parusavacha the the swearing pisunavacha is um talking things that are not add value to anyone basically and some proper lap is talking about others and unnecessary things about others basically so preventing these so you're making a promise to prevent these that you do with your words from the mouth so that is the second sadhu and the third sadhu is the mano sucharite the the mind uh the the preventing preventing activities immoral activities that are done through the mind so in total there are 10 immoral activities so basically you are preventing the 10 immoral activities so you are promising yourself to prevent the 10 immoral activities what are the three with the 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 mind abhidya vyapada mithya ditti abhidya is uh, extreme attachment and vyapada is hatred and mithya ditti is the uh, the the d- delusions that you have with regards with the the mind and misconceptions that you have so these are the 10 immoral activities so what you are doing is you are promising yourself to prevent from these and at the end the long sadhu is to represent all three i am adhering to these and i'm preventing from these 10 immoral activities so you're promising yourself so in other words you're preventing from raga you're preventing from dvesha and you're preventing from moha you are promising yourself so this is actually something that we should be doing ourselves and uh, when we are saying sadhu 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 every single time we should be focusing on this we should be concentrating on this so that's very very important and what does it mean by having the two hands together 
why do we keep it in our heart um, and why do we keep it on our forehead when we do the praying what does that mean if someone asks so what we do is we open the the fingers we open all the ten fingers these ten fingers represent the ten immoral activities so what we do is when we when we are doing something bad we normally close this say you're stealing you will be you will have to close the fingers when you're stealing if you're fighting if you are with hatred you always go for the the punching position where you have to bend your fingers so opening means you're opening it when you're giving something away you're opening your fingers your hands your fingers are opened so that's what you're doing so you're opening and you're making sure the ten immoral activities are not going to happen and by keeping it in your heart that means from the bottom of your heart you're promising and by keeping it on your forehead you're promising that you will be mindful about it you'll be conscious about it and you will make sure you do this throughout the day so that's what it means by doing it that way. So you also say, Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. What does that mean? One might want to know what that means. It's not, uh, there are two meanings actually. So the first meaning is like, I am praying Lord Buddha as my teacher. It's a very, very simple meaning. But that's not the deeper meaning. That's not what you should be thinking when you're doing this. What you should be thinking or what should be focusing, what you should be focusing on when you're doing this is, I am going to be flexible. I'm going to change myself. And I'm going to see the inside out being flexible and open I'm going to see the inside out rather than looking at things as a whole I'm going to open it up and I'm going to look at them arahato raha uh, arahato means we tend to taste things from the five senses from the eye from the ear from the nose from the the mouth and the body we taste things. Arahato means we stop tasting this. Samma Sambuddhasa means we take things as a whole and we take it with avidya and trishna, with the, the delusions and with the uh, with um, with raga or with uh, attachment rather than taking everything with attachment and um, with delusions we are going to look at this we are going to open this we are going to open ourselves up and then we are going to look at this and then we are going to see this in order to end the sansara life cycle or the journey of life so this is what we are promising ourselves and then how are we going to do this is by the Kaya Sucharita, Vachya Sucharita, and Manu Sucharita, or Raga Kaya, Dvesha Kaya, Moha Kaya, with the uh, getting rid of the Raga, getting rid of the Dvesha, and getting rid of, rid of the Moha. Um, so that's. So, in other words, uh, getting rid of the, the desires, the hatreds, and the delusions. So, how can we do this what what are we going to do are we thinking about i am going to do this tomorrow i'm going to do this forever or are we thinking about yesterday no we are only thinking about now we are focusing on right now this moment because we only have 
the control about this moment. We can only control this moment. I'm not saying controlling the moment in terms of outside, controlling in terms of raga, dvesha, moha. You can control your raga, you can control your dvesha, and you can control your moha, creating this. I'm not talking about the vipaka, I'm talking about the abhisankara, or the creation of this. So this is what is very important to understand. Once you understand this, when you pray, you can make sure you follow this and then getting rid of the dasa akusal is what we need to be doing and getting rid of the raga dvesha moha is what we need to be doing. If we keep practicing this regularly, what happens is it becomes a habit. So you, you are mindful, you're focused because end of the day, what we do every single time is we do something from our mind, we do something from our body or we do something from our mouth or words. So if we have control, if we focus, if we concentrate on these three and make sure we have the Manosu Charita, we control the mind in terms of not doing these three Abhidya, Vyapada, Mithya, Ditti. We, have, we control the Vachi, Vachane, or the words, make sure we don't um, do the four immoral activities with regards to the words, and then we make sure we don't do the three immoral activities with regards to the, the body, then we are making sure the Dasa Kusale doesn't happen. We are making sure the Raga, Dvesha and Moha does not occur. That means we are living in the, the Nivana state. We are living in the Nivana state. So we are in a different state. So that means we are in a tranquil state. In other words, another way to look at this is understanding the fire. Understanding Raga, Dvesha and Moha as fires. How do we understand this? How do we, how do we see Raga as a fire, as a burning, as a suffering, as a worry? When we say Raga, when we say the desires, we don't normally, a normal person wouldn't feel that as a, a burning. But sometimes we use the word burning desire. So the, the higher the desire is, it becomes a burning desire. Luckily they use the word burning desire in English. Why? It's actually burning. <laughs> when, uh, when you have a very strong desire, say for example you see something, you can uh, think about something that you love, that you like so much, that you want to achieve really badly. Uh, anything to do with Lao Kika, mundane life. See how much you suffer inside, how much you burn inside. So that's why it's a burning desire. So until you achieve that, until you get that, you're going to suffer. So how did that happen? I'm going to tell you a, an example. Imagine one of your friends came over to you and said, oh, you should have watched this movie. That's one of the best. You should not miss that movie. This is one of the best I've ever watched in my life. You should watch it straight away. And then imagine you love watching movies. And for example, it was a, we'll assume it's a, a, an action movie. And we, and that you love action movies. So now you're so keen, you want to know more. You ask, okay, who's the actor, who's the actress? And then this person tells you, okay, she's the actress and this is the, the actor 
and you are in love with these two and what happens is you create a desire in your mind from that point from that uh, time you start suffering you are suffering you're burning you want to watch it badly say you're in in the office during the day and say it's on Netflix or it's on one of uh, the free channels or you have or you want to buy that movie now you go out you say you bought the DVD or but you can't watch it until you come home or you know that you can watch it after going home because it's on Netflix now you can't wait to go home and watch it until you watch it you're going to suffer but you don't feel like a suffering because you're thinking about the outcome you're thinking that after watching you're going to get some happiness some pleasure so you you don't feel the suffering but you're suffering you're suffering very badly you only think about the film now so the the stronger the the desire the the higher the suffering so once you go home and then you sit down you watch the movie once you watch the movie you're happy so how did you become happy how did this happen what happened was you created the suffering for yourself this suffering wasn't there before that friend came over to you and told you that there was a movie like this you didn't know you weren't suffering with regards to this now you created the suffering in your mind because of the desire and now you fulfilled the desire you got rid of the, the the suffering that you created yourself and now you're happy so this is how normal mundane people become happy you create a suffering yourself in your mind and then you suffer until you achieve that and then once you achieve it you become happy that's how the mundane people become happy this is what you need to understand this is very very important and once you understand this you stop creating the sufferings for yourself that's what it means by sankaparago purisasakamo this is a, a mentally fabricated a desire uh, that you created in your mind and until you achieve that desire now you're suffering once you achieve it you think you be you became happy because of the film you actually didn't become happy because of the film you became happy because you got rid of that suffering so getting rid of the suffering is what gave you the pleasure the real pleasure imagine you get rid of all the sufferings you have that is the the ultimate happiness that is the ultimate pleasure so this is what you are going to achieve by listening to dhamma this is what happens you get rid of all the sufferings not the individual sufferings that you mentally fabricate or mentally create on a day to day basis and then try to achieve the 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 suffering uh, the the desire and then you become happy so until you achieve that you're suffering so most of the time you create more than you can achieve that's why you're suffering all the time so the moment you stop creating these sufferings for yourself then there is no more suffering you because you're not creating any more suffering so that's where the apisankara what you're doing by creating this is these are what what are called abhisankara so once you stop the abhisankara process there is no more suffering left so <coughs> we went deeper into this and then once you understand this rag or the the desires as fire or burning then you understand becoming free from the desires is the nirvana the tranquility hatred you understand we all understand if you have hatred you just burn you become red you you start shaking you start shivering you bits it's everything changes it's it's not a good feeling 
anyone can understand that the hatred is not a good thing. So I don't need to explain. And delusions are not good. You don't want to be in a delusion because you you don't know the right thing. So you, that's a burning as well. But the the thing that's hard to understand is the the desire bit. So now, if you understand the desire bit as well as a a burning as fire, so getting rid of fire is nirvana. That is the tranquil state. So uh, I hope you guys understood something from this. If you did, then if you think this is useful, share with others. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. If you haven't watched the previous um, episode. Uh, go back to the previous episode I will try to have a link somewhere so that you can watch and listen to the previous one as well uh, if you have any questions please comment below ask any questions I will answer uh, with my knowledge to my knowledge I'm not an expert I will um, teach you what I know I will tell you what I know and um, see you in another discussion next week there was something.